you've just finished the third in, in this yeah. this incredible trilogy. What um, do you want to say, if anything, about it? I want to say it was really hard work. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you've seen some of it. I have. <laughs> Um, anyone who thinks it's a glamorous job should have been inside my head for the last two years. Um, well, in a very strange way, although I didn't attend it when I set out, this is the book that I would have had to have written if what I was trying to do was to give people an idea of what it was like to be female, i.e. half of the population, during one of these most amazing moments in history, the Renaissance. Because the other thing that not only women could do during this period, but quite a lot of them had no choice at all, and the period I'm writing in, maybe 50% of all noble women did it, was go into convents. Because at the age of 15 or 16, during this period of time, if you didn't marry, you could not live alone. The notion that women could lead independent existences just wasn't on. Because as soon as they were of childbearing age, they became potential sexual temptresses. And they had to be somehow controlled by the society. So if they weren't married, i.e. owned by someone, the only other thing they could do was to be owned by God and they literally did become brides of Christ. And this is made even worse by the fact that during this whole period of history throughout Europe, to be married, your parents had to come up with a dowry to sell you, right? You could get a very good deal sometimes, you could marry into big families if you had money, um, but there was also no birth control, so you had to control how many of your daughters you could afford to marry. Mm. And by this period of time, it cost a huge amount. Dowry inflation was a big deal. You think we've got inflation problems now, <laughs> you should have been a mother or father trying to sell a daughter 500 years ago, right? right? And so if you could only marry one daughter but you had three, mm. what did you do? Well, either you married the eldest, or you married the prettiest, or you married the smartest, or if the smartest was a bit too smart, you married the slightly less smart, or whatever. But as a result, there were huge numbers of young women in convents living there for their whole lives. Now, some of them, of course, may have had what we would now describe as vocations. Everyone believed in God, i.e. there's no word for atheism during this period. But some believe more than others, right? And there were a number of young women who really had no interest in being nuns. But that's where they found themselves. 